I mean, I am born, my father was born in Puerto Rico, my mother was born here, uh, born in the South Bronx, uh, a lot of house parties, uh, a lot of hanging out, a lot of wilding out. Uh, we were all on welfare, got evicted a lot, <laughs> so we lived all over the Bronx. Uh, got into uh, got into breaking in 1977 uh, through my cousin Lenny Len. He had brought me to a jam on uh, Cortona Avenue in the Bronx, and it was the first time I had witnessed the dance, the the whole rap game rap artists and DJs all working within one world at the same time, you know? And I was blown away by what I had seen. It wasn't about me saying, oh, I need to just do this dance. And I was like, yo, I gotta keep coming to these jams because I liked everything. It was just everything from, you had your trendy dances like the freak or whatever, uh, and, uh, to, to what the B-boys and B-girls were doing as well. You had, uh, there were no rap records, so anyone that got on, on a stage to perform in any park or, or community center actually had to have a show. It actually had to be a talent, you know, a, 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 some real talent on that stage to get on it and, and, and rock the crowd. Um, so performance has always been a very big part of, of uh, hip-hop's influence on me. You know, when it's showtime, you have every right in the world to let your ego burst out as much as it wants. Um, so anyway, I grew up in the Bronx dancing. And I'm, I'm trying to, this is hard to do a life story in like a little short. <laughs> Lived in Manhattan for a few years. Got my name Crazy Legs when I went to school, junior high school, 52, in the Inwood section of the Bronx. Uh, met Henry Chalfant through another B-boy named Take One. Uh, who uh, Henry Chalfant was a sculptor and photographer who gave us our first show at uh, it was set up for our Common Grounds. It was like 1980 or 1981, and, and, and we were set to do the show there, and it's down by Canal Street. But there was going to be this gang fight with the Ball Busters, which is a gang from 137th Street, and one of the other graph artists that were attending the, the, the uh, event. So our, sh our first show was postponed. We, and we ended up doing it at the Kitchen Center for Performing Arts. And that, that show was called Graffiti Rock. It was the first time hip hop was presented as a culture, where you presented all the aspects of hip hop, the art, to the dancing, to the MCs and the DJs. Uh, one thing led to another, you know, New York Times, uh, Village Voice, East Village Eye, uh, first issue of Details Magazine we were in, uh, meeting Antonio Lopez, who also became another person that was very uh, involved with getting us out there as, uh, as an up-and-coming you know, trend at the time. And uh, we formed that Studio 54, my places like the Mud Club, all, all these like iconic places. And, and uh, eventually we got management, got into movies, Beach Street Wausau, Flashdance, uh, the documentaries like Star Wars, uh, we had our own documentary called Rock Steady, uh, got the rug pulled out from under us, went into an identity crisis mode, started working a regular job in, 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 in the uh, late 80s. Um, got involved with certain friends, a lot of them died, and then I decided that I wanted to continue to use hip-hop as a vehicle to uh, keep certain people's memories alive that contributed to hip-hop, as well as use hip-hop as a way to inspire young brothers and sisters to do the right thing and you know, give them an another alternative and an opportunity to use their talent. And, and now we're at, at a stage where we're just recruiting new members to find the next leaders of Rock Steady Crew to pass the torch on to. Jimmy D, Jimmy Lee, JoJo, Peabody, uh, Easy Mike, CN. Oh uh, man, I'm not a founding member, by the way. 
No, you're the first okay. vice president. I'm the president of Rocksteady, but uh, Jimmy D, who was the president of Rocksteady when it first started, gave Rocksteady to me in August of 1981. And, uh, but yeah, those are generally the, the people that started Rocksteady crew in the Bronx. And my, myself and Lenny Lennon were the last two members to be part of the original squad in the Bronx. And this is like before we even came into Manhattan. I met Frosty Freeze and Devious Dose and all these other people that became what would be considered the next generation of Rocksteady because they weren't part of, you know, they weren't from the Bronx. 